13.0.0.0.0, the, the end of the 13th Batum long count, December 21st to 2012. It does fall at a time when the December solstice sun is lined up with the dark rift at the crossroads. Now, so, you know, the, it's not correct to say that the solstices were of little interest to the ancient Maya. That's one of the talking points that you find out there uh, in some of the, uh, the books on 20, the academic uh, books on 2012. Mark Van Stone is particularly fond of, of reiterating this point, and it just seems like a talking point to me. I mean, it's not a very good uh, uh, critique based in the facts, because clearly at Azapa, which is the most important place of interest, uh, the solstices were of great interest. Um, I've been writing about this since 1995, and uh, one of the good things that happened at the Tulane Conference in 2009 was um, Anthony Avini told me that he had been to the site and measured the ball court, and they didn't publish it until 2000, but you can, in this article written by Avini and Hartung, he found an act that the ball court was accurately aligned with the uh, solstice. Not only that, but they concluded that a solstice-based calendrical cosmology was prevalent in the pre-classic at Izapa, in the Izapan region in uh, southern Mexico. So that's good stuff. So it's really, uh, anyway, my, my whole theory is based upon you know, looking at the monuments of Izapa, and uh, I put forward this theory that the Maya intended uh, the 2012 cycle ending to target this alignment. Real briefly, before we get into Tortuguero, I'm going to um, share, share with you something. Because many of you may have been to Chichen Itza, and of course it's the place where you get that shadow serpent coming down on the equinoxes. And uh, it's like a, the serpent of light, you know, and it's an amazing uh, hierophany that happens every year on every equinox begins around uh, 4 o'clock, runs for a good 45 minutes or so, or maximizing around 4.30 p.m. If you turn around from looking at this and walk about 50 yards that way, you'll be in the middle of the great ball court at, Azop, at uh, Chichen Itza. And it's always been a mystery as to why this ball court has such high sides. You know, why? You know, I think because at that very same moment, the southern end angle of descent in the west that casts a shadow right down the middle of the ball court. Here's the, the west wall, here's the east wall, and it casts a shadow going right down the middle. And of course, that's pretty cool because the equinox is the day of equal night and day. So I, I just noticed that one time. I don't know, has anybody seen that written up in any book or anything like that? I don't, I don't know, I've never heard it uh, mentioned. Okay, Tortuguero Monument 6, Lord Jaguar in 2012. All right, if you're still awake, this is, sorry it's taken us so long to get to this point, but uh, this, is, this, is the, uh, this is the juicy stuff here. Are we all doing all right still? Uh, okay, it's, it's kind of, this is pretty brief here, but uh, it gets to the heart of it. We do have to roll along, John, and then we wanted some, a little bit of time uh, for questions and answers, and okay. it, it is already 9.30. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well I timed it for an hour and a half. So, uh, the Sun God Binding event <coughs> is actually recorded on Tortuguero Monument 8. And uh, this is a very significant event in the life of uh, Balaam Ahau, Lord Jaguar. He was the uh, 7th century king of Tortuguero who commissioned the carving of this Monument 6 text. So, here's a picture of it. It's in the Museum of Via Hermosa. The parts that survive is this long vertical part as well as this right flange. And it's believed that there was a left flange here too. It's very logical and there's a distance number here that calculates back to a date in this left flange. So although the left flange is missing, uh, we can reconstruct that the monument was very, very probably originally T-shaped. And as such, it rem it's reminiscent of the T-shape of the eek day sign. Eek means wind. Uh, it's also used in architectural uh, portal symbols at nearby Palenque. Uh, this actually factors into my interpretation of, of the monument. So here's part of the right flange. This other piece actually is now missing. Uh, it was documented and photographed and, and, and drawn. Uh, it's in a private collection somewhere now. We don't know where. Uh, 
Here is the 13th platoon completion and the four Ahau, three Camp King date of December 21st, 2012. This is why we know it's the 2012 monument. And here's the entire right flange. Oh, that's kind of, okay. All right. Uh, <coughs> and as you can see, there's a lot going on here. Uh, as Jim mentioned, some of these glyphs are eroded, but actually now, we, uh, my scholars, Sven Gronmeyer, who studied the site, um, and Bart McLeod, they went back to early photographs and they published an essay just last August in the, uh, in the YF online, it's online for free. And you can read it, it's really amazing. They focus all on the epigraphy, but they were able to like reconstruct what is really going on here. And it has to do with a, um, a ceremony involving this deity, Bolognote, and uh, a ceremony that seems to be analogous to the kind of ceremonies that the Maya still practice, like, for example, in the Mashimon cult in Guatemala. Um, this Mashimon cult, it involves, it's kind of syncretically combined with some Christian features, but it involves the sacrifice of Mashimon. Again, deity sacrifice is required at a period ending in order to facilitate successful renewal into the new cycle. So these ideas are really embedded here and uh, the thing is, though, that usually somebody has to perform the sacrifice right. And in the Mashimon call, it's the Tehna, the, the sacrificial priest, who performs the right. Um, here's uh, the map with Palenque, Tortuguero nearby, not too far away. They were linked up. Um, they actually share the same place emblem. Here's a map of the site. Doesn't really matter that much. Um, the site's been destroyed, you can't visit it. It was turned into a cement factory. And in fact, uh, what I've heard um, is that because the cement factory wanted to expand their operations at the site, there were some remaining structures. And one day, uh, about 10, 12, 15 years ago or something, the Mexican government army showed up and destroyed the site because they didn't want I mean, there wasn't much left there, I mean, granted. I mean, all the monuments had been hauled out, but they just destroyed it because they didn't want to run into any uh, complications with archaeological reconnaissance and uh, preservation. So, um, great for cement. Uh, okay, here's, here's the monument. Um, as you can see, the blue highlighted areas are the 13 dates. And the dates are sequentially generated with uh, distance numbers. And here's the first distance number on the monument that generates this date. And this is the date of Lord Jaguar's accession to kingship in 644 AD. And the distance number has to be based upon an earlier date. So what we can do, since we actually can figure out what his actual accession date was in 644, we can subtract this distance number and get this mysteriously missing date that was originally on the missing left flange. That is his birth date. And it can be reconstructed. So you get the next date, and the next date, and the next date, and all these distance numbers. And it's, it's, this is just basic reconstruction. You know, it's, it's how scholars reconstruct the monuments. So there's actually 13 total dates. And although we've had some studies by Gronmeyer and McLeod and Van Stone, none of them looked at the astronomy. So, so this is the research that I've been doing um, with Michael Grove uh, based upon uh, you know, the, the need to look at the astronomy going on in these 13 dates. So you have the 2012 date over here in the right flange and you have this reconstructed birthday of Lord Jaguar in the left flange. Now the distance number here, um, I'm going to skip through some of this but you know, it's kind of interesting but you know, there's there's an ambiguity in the distance number, and it can be boiled down to a four or five day uh, range for his birthday. And I believe that November 30th is the best candidate because November 30th falls on the day one eek. Remember, eek is the T-shaped day sign. I think that the actual shape of the monument reiterates the day of his birth. Uh, but in any case, if it's not one eek, it's one of these other ones within this probably four day range. And I say that because um, there's really no room for an extra bar there. Uh, there's room for an extra bar, but it doesn't appear in the surviving part of the distance number that there was a bar there. There might be a few dots there, but anyway. So he was 
He was really born between November 29th and December 2nd of 612 AD. It's only a four day range. Now, if you do the astronomy for that date, let's take the midday. It's not gonna change that much. You know, Basically, you have the sun on November 30th of 612 uh, was positioned right at the crossroads of the Milky Way and the ecliptic, right at the southern terminus of the dark rim. It's not on the solstice, 20 days before the solstice, because in the 1400 years be between Balama House birth and the 2012 date, the skies have shifted 20 degrees. Precession has caused the solstice to converge with this. So you get these kinds of alignments going on throughout Maya history on different dates. Um, in 612 AD, the alignment of the sun with the crossroads of the Milky Way and the ecliptic at the southern terminus of the dark rift happened right around November 30th. Well, this is pretty interesting. You know, that, that's the birth of, here's the uh, here's the position of the sun in 2012. It's right at the crossroads of the Milky Way and the ecliptic at the southern terminus of the dark rim. But it happens on the solstice. That's what defines 2012 uh, as a, a rare era within the cycle of precession. So, this is the astronomical parallel between Lord Jaguar's birthday and the 2012 period ending date. He was born on a galactic alignment. Wasn't on the on the solstice, 2012 date is a galactic alignment on the solstice. So this is very, very uh, intriguing and interesting because, also because they're the first and the last dates on the monument. His, his, his birthday happens here, and here's the 2012 date here. There's kind of a structural parallel between these two dates, as well as an astronomical parallel. 